Hey everyone, this is Pause or Repeat. Here we figure out whether a game is really worth your time and money. Today's game is The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. This is a Legend of Zelda game developed by the same team that did the remake of Link's Awakening, and this can easily be seen in the art style of the game with a top-down 3D, 2D cartoon aesthetic. However, it being a different team than the main Zelda team raises a question on whether it will still feel like a Zelda game. So let's analyze the gameplay and see how they did. The gameplay of Echoes of Wisdom is a bit different from your typical Legend of Zelda game. For starters, you're playing as Zelda, not Link for once. The gameplay loop centers around one specific and versatile mechanic, the ability to use Echoes. You can summon everyday objects or even monsters as Echoes once you learn them. For everyday objects, this simply means walking up to them, and for monsters, this means beating them at least once. The mechanic is used widely for the combat system, but its greatest strength lies in its use for solving puzzles. You'll find yourself building bed bridges, using trampolines, or even attaching yourself to a spider in order to scale walls. So be creative. For the combat, you'll mostly summon monsters to fight for you while you watch from the sidelines. There is an ability to use the classic Zelda game combat like a sword and bow, it's just on a timer. However, the game does give you recharges for that combat mode pretty regularly, so you can fight alongside your monsters. Proper dungeons are also present as seen in other top-down Zelda games, a welcome addition. But how does this all fit into the story. The story of Echoes of Wisdom is a bit of a twist on your typical Zelda game. You first control Link at the end of his adventure. However, right after seemingly defeating Ganon, he gets sucked into a rift. Before fully falling in, however, he shoots an arrow to release Zelda from her crystal prison. She then embarks on her own journey with the help of a fairy named Tri to mend the rifts around Hyrule and save Link as well as the kingdom. But now the question still stands. Pause or repeat? Shouldn't this be called The Legend of Link, since we're playing as Zelda this time and not Link? Because, no, you know, because... the rules are reversed here. What do you <laughs> yeah, think, Yeah, that, that's a good point. And I think, you know, Nintendo's done a really good job with, uh, especially in the year 2024, empowering some of their iconic female characters, like we saw with uh, hmm. Princess Peach, you know, with her game uh, earlier this year. But, yeah, you know, people would definitely say that. But you know what? They they don't want to get sued what if someone already copyrighted that henrik you know maybe, <laughs> that maybe that's, that's, that's why true. maybe that's why they got to stick with it but yeah you're again, <laughs> we're talking about nintendo suing people you know they, yeah. i think that they're willing to sue people if it means they get money well you know <laughs> beyond their devious schemes you know behind the scenes i gotta say henrik this is a charming twist in the princess zelda saga i mean suddenly she's the star of the show tasked with saving hyrule uh, after our beloved swordsman link gets yanked into a mysterious rift like my socks in a washing machine i don't know about you henrik but they always seem to go missing when i no, need it happens the, to the most times. it's weird it is like where to go <laughs> yeah what's up with all that and then all of a sudden you got all these strange rifts that are popping up everywhere munching on anyone who gets too close and goodbye to the king and his trusty advisors who probably thought to themselves henrik like they were probably just taking a stroll. I mean, who knew that saving the kingdom would come with so much unwanted real estate development, right? I mean, everything's getting taken, even buildings for crying out loud. Yeah. No, yeah. So, the, I mean, that is the whole thing is the, the, the game. It's meant to give you just a landscape for you to be creative with. And you actually do have to be pretty creative for some of these puzzles. I wouldn't say the puzzles are like super hard, but... You know, Legend of Zelda puzzles have never really been really that hard when it comes down to it. Maybe frustrating for some things, like, you know, the infamous Water Temple from Ocarina of Time. Right. But they're never really, like, so hard that you're like, I have to step away from this for, like, a week, and then I can come back to it and understand what well, I'm doing. You know, it's not like that. Well, take the cue from the art direction, Henrik, right? I mean, it's very yeah, child-friendly. I mean, it's it's really kind of geared towards everyone, and I think that's definitely was its premise compared, you know, to the past, you know, title that they were just exploring. I think they wanted to kind of tone it down a little bit, you know, kind of keep it, you know, rated E for everyone. But I got to say, I mean, you're absolutely right. I absolutely love the smorgasbord of enemies Princess Zelda faces on her adventures. I mean, plus she's got her floating buddy that you highlighted perfectly in your video, Try, which, you know, can create echoes out of any enemy you defeat and then can conjure up all sorts of random random objects i mean i found myself thinking like wow you know echo is basically nintendo's way of go ahead 
break our game. We dare you. I mean, it's it felt very similar, right? <laughs> I mean, didn't that kind of remind you of like Breath of the Wild with all that creative chaos? And then they turned it up 11 with Tears of the Kingdom. And then they found yeah. a way to make it happen with this like 2.5D Zelda game. I thought oh, it was yeah. I very, actually very, very feel creative. Like they, they took a lot of things they learned from Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom yeah. and said, what can we translate from the 3D games to 2D? And, yep. you know, so you have things that really almost feel like the ultra hand ability from Tears of the Kingdom and the whole being able to build, um, you know, machines in Tears of the Kingdom. Like they, they take stuff like that and they put that into this game. And I think it's really awesome that they did a great job of translating it into the 2D environment and it doesn't feel out of place or anything like that. It feels like it slots right in and... Yep. There's not a whole lot I can really complain about when it comes to the to the puzzles and the creativity that you can, you know, decide to be with with a puzzle. You can do it one way or you can do it another way. There's oh, yeah, absolutely. several different ways to approach <laughs> different puzzles. Well, I mean, especially when you're flipping the classic formula on its head, I think that was a really smart, stylistic move. And I mean, you're talking about the puzzle rooms and echoes of wisdom. I mean, you're absolutely right. They got treasure troves of options that leave lead you onto a lot of aha moments i mean yeah didn't you get that kind of same vibe play in this game like those childhood memories we all had i mean i was having like rogue waves hitting me over and over and over again <laughs> like you're talking about sometimes you're gonna go into a cave and you're gonna see this like seemingly impossible chest only to realize that maybe you had the tools all along to be able to open up that chest whether it is those echoes that you collected along the way whether it's a monster mm -hmm. having to hit a button uh or maybe a uh, stacking objects as if though you are a mad scientist you know without the lab coat or the degree or maybe you're like a toddler that's just like stacking up his uh, his building blocks i mean it's really really funny how this game like really adapts to all the because you wouldn't think that you can mash all that together and again, a 2.5D universe while also not trying to mimic Link, but also do something different that really makes Zelda the centric character. Yeah, and I think if there's only one thing that I can really give it a, a downgrade on the point system, if there even is, is one to give for this, is really the combat. I feel like while it is creative yeah. to be able to summon an enemy that you've defeated to defeat other enemies for you, I feel like you end up getting disconnected from the combat a little bit. And yeah, there is that swordsman mode that you can go into, but you're not going to be in that all the time because you can't. You can't yeah, be in right. it all the time. And so, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it, it, it reminds me, <laughs> surprisingly enough, of how I felt about the combat in a game like Devil May Cry 5 where... You mm. play as these two guys, Nero or Dante, and they're really just in there, you know, slashing everything, you know, doing their thing. And then you play as V and you're just like sitting in the back, you know, yeah. while your minions are doing everything is it's, it's not as exciting. Yeah, it's a little bit of a point, you know, it's a it's a tad bit slow base. I kind of, uh, you know, I, I think I saw it online where some people were joking that this game kind of reminds them of like a children's version of Diablo four with how slow <laughs> the attack mechanics kind of be. And they're like, we're just kind of slowly gearing you up to the mature route that you will sooner or later explore in your lifetime. And it's so funny that you were referencing the whole idea about, you know, Princess Zelda, you know, wielding, you know, Link's sword, because I was literally going to ask you that because I was thinking about those energy bars it kind of reminds you about like how fast they drain out i think it was this is the analogy that i was kind of thinking about it it's basically your energy bar drains faster than your parents losing patience over your nonsense when you keep asking them for more candy at the market the day after halloween that's basically <laughs> how it works okay so you don't have enough echoes already that's basically what the game's trying to tell you henrik we do not want you using link's sword and i think that's kind of the cool moment especially when you get into some of those boss battles because yeah you're definitely going to need the sword but then also at the same time they want you to be able to utilize the just the arsenal of echoes that you have uh within your you know your weapon belt so i think it's really really cool and you know just on a weird level too what really surprised me about this game was the fact that they added the automation system i were you thrown off by this i mean they, they got you building robots now in zelda i felt that felt a little out of place i mean yeah i get that they were creating that more creative 
you know, element in the in the last game, Tears of the Kingdom. But like, yeah, I was gonna you know, say. I mean, you were able to do that in uh, Tears of the Kingdom. I mean, maybe not. You know, by default, were they expecting people to build like full on mechs? and robots but yeah right. i've seen people do that in tears of the kingdom and it, and it works but it just you know? kind of threw me off though because i, I get it <laughs> they're, they're a bit stationary i mean you gotta manually wind them up before they start working so they're not quite like those tesla robots we've all been seeing circulating <laughs> over the web over the last week they're more like those robot butlers that need more maintenance than your old lawnmower so they're not as reliable as they are in Zelda, but it just kind of felt a tad out of place, I gotta say. And then lastly, I just gotta mention this. I was, you know, art style. What did you think about this, Henry? Because when I kept thinking about the art style, I kept pondering to myself, would it have worked better if it wasn't so much that cartoonish route? I mean, would it have been better if they went with a modern approach? I mean, how did you feel about that? I mean, do you think that would, does that take away from that old school element that maybe they were trying to gear like half of it GameCube and half of it maybe Game Boy Advance? No, I don't think it takes it away from the experience at all, really. I think actually the art style will keep it feeling fresh even 10 years from now, as opposed to if they went with a more realistic approach to things and not like the cell shaded cartoony aesthetic. Because even, you know, yeah, you can look back at the games that have done the, the re more realistic darker tone like twilight princess for example like you can go yeah. back to that and it still looks pretty good but it doesn't hold up as well uh comparing to the art style of like wind waker which is more like what this is game has tried to do that more of cell shaded cartoon like definitely not look trying to look like reality approach it, it's a it's a stylistic choice for a reason and it's to make it look timeless really when you look at it 10 years from now it's going to look the same that, that it did now yeah, now that I'm listening to you, Henrik, uh, I think you're right. Uh, I don't know if I want that realistic approach. I mean, if we're having robots <laughs> in this game, we might be seeing Link sporting a man bun and then maybe <laughs> sipping on a pumpkin spice latte. So <laughs> I think you've convinced me. Let's keep with the cartoonish route. But I think it's time. The verdict has got to be in place. And you know what? I think it's a repeat. I think it's a lot of fun. I think a lot of people that are really in gear with The Legend of Zelda – franchise is going to have a blast with this game and you're going to want to revisit it you know five years from now because you're going to have maybe your loved one that wants to pick it up and then you might be like oh my gosh i haven't played this game enough or i you know we don't get to explore the saga of you know princess zelda enough and so i think yeah i definitely think it's going to live the test of time and you know it's going to open up even more doors to explore her story even further what do you say henrik yeah, it's a repeat for me as well. I, too, believe that a lot of people will have a great time in this new legendary experience from the Legend of Zelda series and moving forward into the, you know, several years from now. And I'm also very glad to see that Nintendo hasn't stopped trying to at least release some sort of 2D Zelda game because there's always that thought in the back of my head. Hey, are they ever going to go back to that? Now yep. that they've got such a focus on the 3D space with, you know, the last two games that they did in that being such big hits. Yeah. They might not have as much incentive to go back to the 2D style, but they did here. And, and I'm I'm glad they did because it's a great game. Well, they definitely got their incentive on their uh, iconic Nintendo female characters. Like, again, you know, we've had Princess Peach. We've had, you know, Princess Zelda. And I got to say, Henrik, now all eyes are going to be on Samus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know for what I'm saying? Metroid like, game, yeah. Don't screw it up. <laughs> we do have Metroid Prime coming. That that has been oh, announced already, Metroid Prime that, 4. Okay, fair, hey, fair so. enough. That is so freaking <laughs> true.